All right, Tim, let's get to uh, Sabrina Ionescu. Again, um, she, she, more triple-doubles than anyone else in the history of NCAA women's college basketball. Her Oregon Ducks were ranked number two in the country at the time of COVID shutting everything down. They were on a path to something great. Just this past Friday, and you saw it on Sportsnet 1, she was selected by the New York Liberty, first overall in the WNBA draft, joining Canadian Kia Nurse on that roster. Earlier today, Tim and I had the opportunity to speak to one of the higher profile uh, team athletes in women's sports right now, Sabrina Ionescu. And uh, first off, we, we asked the question we normally ask, how are you doing and, and how are your family doing? Um, thank you for having me. And, and everyone's good. We're all safe um, just here in the Bay Area. Uh, I want to get to what it was like hearing your name called out first and all of the things that are, are in the future for you. But living here in Toronto, one of the more multicultural cities in the world, uh, both Sid and I grew up with a few Romanians. So was basketball the top sport in the house growing up? Or was there pressure for the 5'11 daughter to somehow be the next Nadia Comaneci? Or or <laughs> maybe maybe was it soccer like Georgie Haji? It was, it was soccer uh, for yeah. sure. Um, that's just what my, my dad like watched religiously. Um, but you know, I did, I did do gymnastics and ballet when I was younger. Um, but I ended up becoming a little bit too tall for that. So I switched (laughs) to basketball and never really looked back since. Did you envision draft night for you looking like that? I mean, what, what was that like from your perspective, a moment you've been dreaming about your whole life Friday night? and some of the best ratings ESPN's gotten for the WNBA draft in, in 16 years. What what was it like yeah. in reality for you when it happened? Um, obviously, it wasn't what I had imagined for, you know, my draft night, but um, it, was, it was so cool how they were able to get that on ESPN and to try and capture that moment. Um, it was a relief. I mean, it was hard to hear, really, because there was a lag from the TV, and my phone was on speaker to try and hear my name being called, and the reception was kind of off and so it wasn't very like climatic but uh, when I finally heard my name it was just like this sense of relief and um, my family was super happy so it, it was fun. So what happens when you do the interview and all that calms down like you turn to your family and what happens? Well I had interviews for about two and a half hours after that <laughs> or two hours and so I didn't really you know, they kind of just were continuing to watch the draft while I was doing them. And then after when everything settled down, like we had dinner and were able to just kind of spend some time together and, you know, away from my phone. What was the most surprising text or phone call that you got when all was said and done? Um, you know, Kyrie called me, which was cool. We talked a little bit. Um, Spike Lee called. Uh, I talked to Tinker Hatfield. <laughs> there were some pretty cool people that uh, reached out. Sabrina so Ionescu here on Tim and Sid, uh, the best college basketball player in the history of women's basketball, went first overall on Friday to the New York Liberty. Uh, Kia Nurse, full disclosure here, Sabrina is a friend of the show. She's been on plenty of times. What was the conversation like with her? How early did she reach out? Yeah, she, she reached out, I think, a day before or t- a couple of days before, and we've played each other uh, against each other, and so you know we're familiar with each other, and never played together so I think we're both really excited to be able to kind of join you know forces and, and play together um, but she's super nice and you know I love her game and just watching her you know growing up just because she's a little bit older than me so I'm excited to learn from her. We all understand Sabrina that the health of our continent comes first and that's all on all of our minds but with that understood how excited are you to get to New York and, and start that next chapter of your life as a pro? Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm so excited. Um, you know, I've I've been home during this whole time, and I'm just so excited to kind of start that next journey. And you know, hoping when everyone gets you know healthier and and safe out there, um, you know, we can all we can all meet up out there. I can meet the team and you know start playing. And so that's something that I'm looking forward to, and just so excited. Sabrina Ionescu here on Tim and Sid uh, went first overall in the WNBA draft on Friday to the New York Liberty. Um, Sabrina, there seems to be, and I don't know if you feel it, there seems to be a pressure on you entering this next stage of your life in terms of the profile you already have, in terms of the numbers you already put up in the NCAA, in terms of pushing women's team sport 
to a different place than it's been. Do you feel that? Do you think that's fair to you? What's what's your take? No, I mean, I, I mean, I definitely hear it, and you know, if I let it consume me, it could. Um, just because of what I did in college and then everyone expecting that exact same thing at the next level. Um, but I really just think, you know, focusing on the work that I have to do and then everything else kind of takes care of itself. And so, you know, I, I kind of like the pressure. I, I like feeling that, you know, it, it's me that has to come in and, and um, you know, help this program and, and help this team. And so, um, and, and not only for us, just for women's basketball as a whole. And so, you know, I, I definitely don't let it, consume me and don't overthink about it. I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing and everything else really just falls into place. You know, I know a lot of folks have come to understand your special relationship with Kobe over the last little while. Um, did he ever talk to you about that pressure that Sid was talking about? Like, I mean, obviously going number one overall was, was kind of on the, uh, on the radar, but did, did, do you know what he would have said to you or did you have that conversation about the pressure of going from, college to the pros yeah no we we definitely just talked about pressure um and he kind of just said like be you it's it's been good enough and that will continue to be good enough and that's what he kind of always told me um you know with with the whole pressure side of things and so you know hearing that from him that's kind of just what I've been focusing on and trying to put that into perspective like yeah he's right I mean I'm just going to keep focusing on what I can controlling what I can and everything else will will fall into place Sabrina I ask you joining us here on Tim and Sid. I, I lost a brother well before his time, but there are always times when I know that he was with me, and because he had a ridiculous work ethic, I feel like there's times that he's pushing me to get better, to be stronger, to do all the things that he used to do. What's the lasting impression that Kobe left on you? What will you take forward with you? Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many things that he's, taught me there's so many things that he's continuing to, to teach me and so um I just think staying mindful of that and kind of not shutting it shutting it out obviously it's hard dealing with it um but just kind of appreciating the fact that I was able to have that relationship and uh learn from you know the best to ever do it and so just that work ethic and that drive and determination to just be the best that you can is something that I'll you know forever take on I, I know Friday was a whirlwind, probably, uh, Sabrina, for you. But how how often did you think of, of Kobe and Gianna on Friday during that? Yeah, I mean, often, you know, we had talked about it a lot. And he was obviously such a big supporter of uh, the WNBA and just women's basketball. And so he probably would have been, you know, sitting at the table with me if, you know, he was here. And same with Gigi. And so obviously thought about it a lot, but know that, you know, they were watching it from a better place. The all-time leader in triple doubles in NCAA women's basketball, Sabrina Ionescu, here on Tim and Sid. Um, Sabrina, the uh, the future of women's professional hockey in the states and Canada has been a, a bit of a complicated story over the last little while, and and everyone kind of keeps getting back to the same idea that eventually the National Hockey League, in partnership with women's professional hockey, uh, is, is really the best way and the only way to move forward and to move the women's game to where people think it can go. Um, how how vital has the NBA been for the WNBA? I know you're just entering the WNBA, but you've been watching your whole life. Um, could the WNBA be where it is today without the support of the NBA getting it off the ground and, 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 and moving it in a spe- specific direction and helping it move in that specific direction? Yeah, I I mean, I think the NBA plays a huge part in that. I mean, they're they're where we're striving to be. I mean, everyone, you know, those arenas fill up. Everyone's watching those games. Everyone's buying those jerseys and buying those shoes. And so I think, you know, the the NBA does need, um, uh, the WNBA does need the NBA. But I think, you know, it's the roles can also be switched. I think the NBA needs the WNBA as well because I think, you know, those men end up finding – a lot of inspiration, a lot of support through the females that they're watching, and it kind of just unites us. And so I think that's something I'm excited about with playing in Brooklyn is that, you know, we're going to kind of build that family with the NBA team that we're sharing an arena with. And I think many, many teams are going to follow in that direction just because I think it's huge not only for basketball but for our society. Sabrina, obviously um, a lot of athletes like you 
uh, around America and around Canada just didn't get a chance to finish their season. And uh, ESPN did a great uh, seniors night um, tribute, if you will, for a couple of weeks. And it was staggering to see all the stories that just weren't allowed to be completed. You guys were ranked second in the country at Oregon when this all kind of happened. How confident were you that you were going to win an NCAA title? I mean, I was really confident. Um, we were playing our best basketball at that time, and we were, we were, you know, still going up and still ascending. And so I used to be very sad and, you know, to hear that we couldn't continue that and continue to see where that would have led us. But um, I definitely didn't see us losing to anyone, you know, anyone anytime soon for the, for the rest of that season. So, you know, kind of just thinking about what could have been is always difficult, but you know, kind of understanding that there's so many, you know, bigger problems in the world right now than just basketball. And so just being mindful of that. Was it, did that make you proud that Ducks went one, two in the WNBA draft? Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. I mean, stuff like that doesn't happen often. And, you know, even having our third go in the top 10 was huge. And so, you know, I think that just speaks volume about us as players, but our team and, and what we had there. Yeah. Shout out Ruthie as well. Um, I know you were talking very eloquently about the NBA and the WNBA kind of coming together, and there has been talk about a signature shoe. And listen, Oregon might be the right school to set the groundwork for something like that, but what would it mean for you? And I know talking to Tinker, for me, that's like, that's. I mean, I am, I'm a shoe guy. Uh, threes are my shoe. Jordan fours, maybe I'll stretch to that. But what would it mean for you to have the first signature shoe in the WNBA? Yeah, I mean, that idea, you know, is, is beyond me. It's, it's crazy to think about, you know, that. I mean, I've always worn, you know, KD, Kobe, Tyrese. I've, you know, I've always worn men's shoes. And, you know, how we talk about them, it's like, oh, you know, what shoes are you, who's, who's are you wearing? And then to try and think about the fact that, you know, there's going to be girls and boys out there that are talking about my shoes is crazy. But, you know, I mean, there's so much work to do before then. And, um, you know, I'm excited to have to go out there and, and kind of prove myself in order to, to make that, you know, dream become a reality. Well, it's close. It's close. Uh, Sabrina, listen, uh, we really appreciate you taking the time and wish you nothing but the best of luck once the career gets going. Thank you for doing this so much. Yeah, no, thank you guys so much for having me.